Okay, uh, this demo is on color temperature. Today is September 16th, 2016. All right, so on color temperature, we're working with three colors, and you've got a surface that's a little bit more blue, bluish than the brown. Now, if you have your color wheel today, you can look at this, but I'm going to show you a couple of things. So if you notice on your color wheel, one side of the color wheel are colors that we would consider warm. The other side of the color wheel are colors that we would consider cool. Well, they're warm and cool to each other. We'll further learn later that there are warm and cools on both sides. So there's actually warm and cool colors on the entire wheel. Sometimes red can be cool, sometimes the red can be warm. Sometimes the blue can be cool, sometimes it can be warm, but we're not worried about that today. All we're worried about today is the warm and the cool of these values. And so, so we're going to create, to create the painting today, we're going to use these two colors to create a mixture of different values. We're also going to do a value scale like we did before. This value scale is, uh, is going to be a little different. It's going to be a little different the way you create it and mix the values. Defining the warm and cool? Yeah. Now, what is it warm and cool? Well, let me ask you guys. What is it? I, I would just, uh, because maybe you have some ideas about it, uh, what, would, what would seem so visually, so when you're warm or cool, you know how that feels, right? Visually, there's a sense that there's colors that are warm and there's colors that are cool in temperature. We call it visual temperature. Obviously, you can't touch it, though some people who are really into energy work will swear and, and, and say that, state that they can actually feel temperature of colors. They give off a certain energy. But I'm, I'm not talking about that, but, but we think about temperature, and because we always think of it in the sense of feeling it with our senses in our body, that we're either cold or we're warm in the summer or winter, there's colors that temperature-wise, they're visually warm or cool. So what would you think, if you looked at this color wheel, what would you think w would be, or it appear, to be the warmest color. Okay? What other colors? When your body's hot, it's red. And that's what I, why I questioned it, because when you said on the next to each other, on the same side, they can be... Like a blue can be warm. Oh, forget that for right now. That's a whole other discussion. Okay. I just mentioned that because, because not all colors are, are just, I probably, you know, I probably need to say that later. So, so just forget about that right now. All we're worried about are these are being warm and this is cool. So the two colors that we have that represents warm and cool is your brown. I'm just going to call them brown and blue, all right? It'll be easy. So you got brown, blue, and white. But it's your sienna. Make sure it's your sienna that you're that you're working with. Okay, I think the first color I'm going to mix is I'm going to mix a, a mixture of. Uh, and I'm going to get a bunch of paint out because this time last week I didn't have. I don't think I had enough. So I just took some brown and blue and I'm mixing them together. Yeah, I'm making it, this first mixture, I'm making it a little bit more blue. I'm, give, I'm making it a little more blue than brown. Because this is kind of going to be a, my big pile. 
There's my student grade paint. I just used it the whole thing. Okay, let's see. Exactly. Just like value, just like color, all temperature is relative to what it's next to. So, so this is this is a very dark. So I'm I'm kind of going for a a mixture that's quite dark. It's sort of a, let's see that. I've got a bunch of it, so I'm going to take it's just somewhere to start. I'm going to take a little bit out of the big pile I took, and I'm going to add some white to it. The white will really show me if it's going towards the cool side or the warm side, and right now it's sort of right between. If it's right between, it's going to be more of a gray. Okay, so over here I'm going to make a value scale, just like you did before. So I need to make something that will represent black. Now I don't have black on my, I mean I suppose we could use a little black, but I'm trying not to. We could add a little bit of that to make it dark, but I'm going to add. So when I got these two colors, I'm going to have something fairly dark. It's going to appear to be like a, a black color. And just to get it a little darker, I'm going to add a little bit of black. So you can get your black out. We're not going to use too much of it. So there's the dark. That will, that will represent the darkest dark we could ever go with our value. And then I'm going to do another one that's going to be the, the light. Now instead of doing pure white, you'll notice that I'm going to take just a tiny bit of the brown and add just a tiny, tiny bit of the brown and add to the white. So I just tint it. So it's not going to be pure white. The lightest light is going to be just a, a a sort of a, it'll end up being a bit of a cream type of a color. It's still going to be very light. So it's kind of a warm white. All right, now I need to mix a color that's the same as, as this on my board. So you remember how you did that, or you can just look at what you've got and start mixing stuff. Now the, the other thing that I've noticed that some of you have gotten a little hung up on is because this is, this is basically done with burnt sienna and ultramarine blue with no white but with just your medium, this has sort of a transparent feel on the background. When we mix the paint together with white, it'll have more of an opaque, sort of an opacity to it, but I can still match what I have up here. See how I'm mixing this up and I'm thinking in my mind, I'm trying to match the value that I have here because remember that's the value. So if I put it down there in the middle and it disappears, then I know I'm doing good. But it's a little tiny bit too light. So I'm going to add a little bit of blue to it because it can, I can see it needs to be a little bluer. Well, then you'll have it as the, the dark areas, the darker areas, and just see how it goes. Remember, if it gets a little lighter or darker, 
You know, it's, it is better if it has a little bit more of a medium value, but you can still work with it. It'll just be, the board will be a little bit more of what the darks would, would show up. All right, and then, what's up? You're close to everybody? And like crowding everyone's space. Oh. I thought you were saying you're getting really close to everybody. <laughs> you're all becoming friends. Well, know, That's really good. Level, yes. Okay, so here's the here's the trick part now. So when I'm starting to make my my value, you're changing the value from light to dark, but you're also changing the temperature from warm to cool. Okay, so the middle tone that I have here is re really in between the warm and the cool. The middle tone is going to be really neither warm nor cool, it's both. So as I move up from this middle value right here that I've already got established, I make it a little lighter, right? So the next step from here, I make it a little lighter plus what else am I going to add to it? Huh? More blue. Wait a second, I'm going up oh. to it's getting warmer. Down. Yeah, now I'm going up. Sorry if I said down, I, I said up. I meant to say up if I didn't. thought I did. Okay, so I'm going to add a little bit of, and this is where you have to experiment a little bit. So that is getting a little lighter. Plus, it's getting a little warmer. Okay, it's still a little gray, but it's warmer. Can you see how... Now, I don't know if you can really pick this up on the screen, but if you guys see right here on my board, you can see that... Let's see if I can show this. This is warmer and lighter than that. See, it's a little warmer. So, I'm going to keep going up. I'm going to add a little bit more white, a little bit more brown. So the stepping is very, you know, pretty much the same as it goes up with both the value and the temperature. Your board may not fall right in the middle of the scale, but you're still going to mix. You're still going to mix. You know, whatever value sort of disappears with your board might be down here in the darks, but you're still going to mix the values. And I would get to the middle first and work out from the middle up. Light, dark, and then the middle. Is that what you're asking? Or am I close? Yeah. Okay, so there's the next step. You notice how they're getting warmer and lighter. As it moves up, it's getting warmer and lighter. And maybe I'm just going to put I'm just going to put one more little inter intermediate value there. So if you can understand this value scale with temperature, you're home free. You already you guys already know how to paint the sphere and you know how to paint value. So now I'm going to go from the middle and work my way down. So I go back to the middle, and now what am I going to add to this middle to go towards this side? Probably a little more of the blue because it's a little cooler. Now that doesn't mean that you won't see warm temperatures on the shadow side. Guess where some of the warm temperatures are? Remember all the different shadows and lights we have? There you go. The reflected light is reflecting some of that warm back up into it. So you'll see that, but I'm going to lower this value and I'm going to get it a little cooler. So going up you add white and the burnt sienna. <coughs> going down you add blue, more blue. Yeah, and you may have, you may have uh, little bits of brown to keep it sort of that grayish blue. You don't want to get it blue-blue, right? 
So it's fairly, it's still kind of that gray color, but it's sort of a bluish gray color as it gets darker. The blue will, will give the feeling of it being a little more cool in visual temperature than what we're seeing. So you can see the value scale and the temperature scale happening here. Let me cut that a little bit. This got too wet. I'm just going to take it off and put it on. I, see, I got too much medium in that. Some of you were mentioning how. By the way, you see what I'm doing with my brush right now? If you don't want something on there, the way to take it off is to use the brushes, the, br the bristles this direction and push it. That actually lifts your paint brush or your paint stroke off. I got too much medium in there. That was kind of a dumb thing. Plus, I've already got the dark color that I've established first up here. So I can add some of that as I go towards this dark color. It's got both both brown and blue into it, mixed into it. Okay, so that's stepping down, and then I'm going to step down one more. See if I can get something right between those two. So I've actually made a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I made a ten value scale. It was helpful for me to do that. So. All right, any questions on that? So that's, uh, if you can get that from light to dark and relatively warm to cool, then you've already got all of the information you need to do your painting. And then you'd have to just know what you're looking for and look up on the, on the still life of... Okay, so what I'm gonna start with um, is uh, the first value that I started with, that sort of mixture of the two, and I'm going to start to draw in what I see here. Thinking, what am I thinking about? Can somebody tell me all the things I should be thinking about now rather than what I should be eating for lunch and what I'm going to do tonight for my date and all this. What am I thinking about? Placement. Where's, which way is the shadow ball in relation to your placement? Yeah. So I'm designing, and again, if you get your little square, put your square up there and move it around like a, like a camera. And remember the tangents we talked about. Don't have anything touching the edges of, of your object. I like to start with a square, but what Jill says is really important, the placement. Why is it a good idea to think about the word placement rather than drawing? Considering the bigger picture? Yes. If we think about drawing, then I'm thinking, oh gosh, I've, I've got to draw this thing just so, just perfect. But placement is basically, even if you went like this and put in a big flat shape, that's fine. But the placement is, is just sort of where everything's sitting. You might even have just a bit of a ghost image of what's going on. I didn't really want to mask that in as I just showed you because I kind of want to keep some of this really cool under stuff. I'm going to wipe it back out. But if you work on a whiteboard, that's actually a good way to go. So there's my placement. I'm going to kind of move fast now because you, you know, I can always come back and draw and redraw and make this better. I'm just going to find where my cast shadow, draw through. Remember, draw through with a cast shadow. You guys can see this. I'm going to make it a little darker. I'll use a different. Draw through, just like the rings of Saturn. That draw through really helps me to wrap that around nicely this way. And then I can take this out. And I can take this out Why right here. Why do you here. do that instead of just drawing the line of where the core is? Because if you just draw the line, 
you're going to get something like this. You can see that little shape. If you, if you could just draw the line, you're going to get something like this. And that's going to be like a little corner. It's going to, if I draw it big, it's going to look like that, like a point. And that's not really helping me fill the form of this round because if I draw through, you notice how this line seems to go around here, not just going to a point and stopping. You see, if I, if I, if I draw this right here and I just draw it like this, it goes to a point. That feels like it's just like a flat line, like a smiley face, you know, like on this flat. But if I were to draw through, here's the point right here. If I were to draw through, look what happens to the point. It wraps around so that I'm almost like I'm drawing right on the sphere itself, but I'm on my flat board. That's one thing I've been talking to my advanced drawing class is we've been doing some blind contour drawing and contour drawing and I tell them if you can just imagine yourself actually drawing on the object, drawing around the object even though you're on a flat board. Does that answer the question? Yeah, thank you. You're welcome. Okay, so this is enough. Now I've got to decide what's the next thing I do. It's all the same as before. What's the next thing? I got my placement in. I'm ready to go into some value. What do I do now? Lightest and darkest. Lightest light, darkest dark. All right. So what's the lightest light up there? Well, it's probably this, right? It's probably not the white. That lightest part. I think it's. I think it's actually this. So I'm gonna. I'm gonna cut that one out. So that's my lightest light, and it's the highlight. What's the darkest dark? Can I, can I ask you a quick question? Sure. Um, so you said what you see first, paint last. Um, and I always see the, what the light is hitting first. But So explain your thought process with that. Yeah, I was a little confused when I was supposed to be doing that lightest light, darkest dark. When we get into more uh, subject matter that's got details, then one of apply that more. yeah, for here, what I see first is is sort of the finish, <coughs> and I know I'm putting the lightest light, darkest dark, which I know that would be the finish, but but it's generally all of the details that we see on something that people want to put in first. So for example, if people do portrait painting or, or landscape painting or even a painting of an orange, they want to put all of the details in first because that's what's so, that's the eye candy, that's what's so, that's what's so cool, right? We want to put the eyes in and the nose and they disregard the actual structure under head, the underlying planes of the head. So it probably makes a little more sense when we get into more complicated things to paint. But even right now, uh, in a sense, so yeah, don't get too hung up on that. But it's just something to think about, especially when we get to more complicated things, that you have to forget about all the details. Right now on a sphere, obviously there's, there's not a lot of details, but there are. I mean, I see some highlights here, secondary highlights. I see a core shadow. I see, you know, the edge of the shadow and all of this. But that, uh, that statement will make more sense as we get to the stuff more complicated. Okay, thank you. Okay, now I'm, I'm adding a little bit of the brown color. Because I want to go after what is the least of what's up there. I see mostly light up there, so I don't have any light on here, so I'm going after what I see that's light. Tabletop. Would you think would be warm in temperature or cool in temperature? Warm. Warm. 
Very good. Light source, warm or cool? Warm. Very warm. Can you guys see the blue of the shadows? The guys over here on the north side of the room may not be able to see that. But can you see the, the blue of the shadows? Especially, and it's very, very subtle, but right in here. That's the blue light coming from the outside, light from outside. Is that because the sky is blue? Yeah, we get kind of a, a cooling effect from there. And plus, it's because I've got a warm light. If I have a cool light on there, you wouldn't see it because of simultaneous contrast. So I beefed, the, I beefed up the warm light source so you can actually see that. Okay, light side of this, of the sphere, warm or cool. So the whole light side, the whole light side here, remember we're going to do one value for the whole light side, even though there's some, there's some uh, half tones in here. So tell me to stop when I get to the value that you think would be good for the entire light side. Stop. Right in there. Yeah, that would be good because I use this for the highlight, right? I don't want to get the light side higher than my light. I want you to notice one other. I don't see. I don't know if you can, guys can pick this up, but even this value right here, this little swatch, that's my lightest. I'm looking at this compared to this. This actually looks a lot brighter than this. They're the same paint. That's what I was. That's what we were talking about. That's what Eileen was talking about. So that's why you always check things. But this is already surrounded by some other values, and it's not so isolated. That's isolated. It looks brighter. Okay, so I'm going to mix up or go back to my mixture of that. So you're basically just. Joe mentioned that you're. What did you say? Chasing after? How did you say it? Chasing after? Uh, I like what you said. Chasing value back. So what you're going to do now is you're going to be chasing value and temperature back and forth. It's going to be a little more complicated, but I might just put a touch up there to see. So that's pretty close to what I had, right? It's still warm. I've got, I've got, um, and, and even if you have a tiny bit of blue in these mixtures, because you'll probably will, that's more, this is a lot more of the brown mixture of brown added to the white there might be just a tiny, tiny bit of blue, but it starts to gray up as you move down. So it may not be exactly all brown with just white, but it's going to be, and plus, because this is already a sort of bluish gray, when I lay this value down for the whole entire side, it's going to appear even warmer than what it looks like on my, it looks cooler right now to me on my palette, and it looks warmer as I'm putting it up here. Why is that? My palette's just kind of this gray color underneath. It's because I'm putting it on top of this sort of bluish gray. And so because the bluish gray is, is already down there, it kind of looks A little warmer. There's a little hair, maybe. I can just go right over top of that. I'll put it back in. So if you look at this, you can see we've got sort of warmer with the brown tones on the light side and on the shadow side it goes back into that blue tone and this is the undertone of my painting. So there's some of it that's left So substitute player in some of these areas and then I had my scale over here. I wanted you to see where this was going. This half tone here still a little bit warmer. Here's another one where some of you were talking about 
making steps, almost like brush strokes to make steps. This is another thing you can do. So I wanted to show those. I meant to show those more at the first to see where this is sort of going. Okay, what should I do now? Done. Okay, you're, you're my buyer. You're my buyer. Right? Okay. Okay, you could do that. So I've got, I've got this tabletop in, and, and now uh, things are happening. So um, let's try that. Let's try just a little bit of uh, warm. But how warm is it? Now, this is where it gets a little. Well, let me just say subtle. It gets very, very subtle because, because in the reflected light that's down there, right, down here, that you can see this reflected light, it's very subtle. This is, this is to me, a very bluish, kind of cool. This gets a little bit warmer with this, and I use this because it's kind of a warm tone of wood. That sort of yellow color. So if I if I just try and really a lot of this is basically experimenting <clears throat> trial and error. Just have to kind of mix things up and see what they look like. I'm lightly just putting this in here. I'm not putting it too much. Remember that that the light, the light, the refle reflected light is never as light as anything on the light side, right? Because we think in our brain that it's light, and we're thinking, well, okay, let's get that light, and generally make it too light. I like that. That was a good decision. Now what? Let's get the get the highlight back that always reminds me what the lightest light is I always like to put that up there because it reminds me okay I can't I can't get much darker than that or light I'm sorry lighter than that right so This is that mixture that I did at the very first. It's quite dark back there, so I'm going to just put it back in there. I can make this now. The thing is, is you can direct, you can direct this process because I can make this more cool or more warm with the two colors. When you mix the two colors together, it's quite dark. But it can be a little more of a brownish dark, or it could be more of a bluish. And if I wanted to make this warm feel more warm, right, simultaneous <clears throat> contrast, what would I put back here, right? A little more of the blue, keep it a little more cool. Okay, there's the rest of my paint right there. Now, I don't know if you could see that, but to me what happened, that all of a sudden just warmed that up quite a bit. Putting that back there, I don't know if it shows on the camera very well, but when you see it on here, you can see that there's sort of a cooling temperature back there, and it just warmed that up. Let's go for the uh, half tone, or maybe this is a half tone. No, let's go for, let's go for a half tone. So, it's working away here, let's see. I'm adding a little bit of uh, blue. I'm going to test it. This is what I talked about. So I'm mixing, mixing, and I'm going to test it. It's close to what I want. I want a little bit darker than that. I'm going to add a little bit more. It's getting close to that core shadow, so.
needs to be a little darker. If I scrub it in a little bit and I'm like, hmm, got to get a little darker than that. That's too blue. I don't know if you guys can see that, but that's that's sort of too blue for this for the uh, light side, and so just so you can see the subtle difference. We're getting into subtleties now. I'm making it the same value. Can you guys see the difference between that and that? That's a huge difference. That that will be that will make a big difference because this is sort of going into the and even though this is still sort of brown color it's still cooler in temperature than this right because it's still going towards that and then I can step I can take that color and I'm going to add a little bit of the blue and brown combination a little bit more Let's see if I can get even a darker one and you can step it down like this I actually like painting like this See how it's stepping down and it's starting to give it a sort of wrapping or going around. Sometimes I take the back end of my brush and clean up an edge, scrape it up, make it a little... Okay, so you see how that, that goes into the half tone. And then on the shadow side, we've got to decide what's darker or lighter, the cast shadow or the shadow side and which one of these would be best for what. It seems to me that that this is a little lighter. This is a little lighter. And this is probably the, what the value. So I'll probably keep the value here for my what's underneath. I'm going to wipe this out, some of my drawing. Now on the shadow side, what am I going to do because it's got to get a little lighter but now it's on the shadow side so so let's get a little bit of this mixture I started with and add some white to it and I'm just going to try a few things this is the thing that is trial by error sometimes you just touch stuff up there it feels a little too warm to be over there because really where that core shadow is that's a little cooler make it a little darker. So you see I'm now I'm jumping back and forth between light, dark, warm, cool. And as I get closer to my reflector light, what am I going to add a little tiny bit to that color? Right? A little bit of the brown. It's going to sort of graze it off. It's kind of nice. It kind of grays it off and it takes it out of the kind of warming up a little bit over here, even though it's. So back to the thing that Robin was asking about that was a little confusing that there's warm and cools all around. You notice, can you see what, why we're talking about that now? There's warm and cool here and there's warm and cool here. It just depends on what it's next to. This is still in the warm family but it's cooler in temperature than this, right? This is in the cool family but this is warmer than that and it's part of the shadow. Does that make sense? So now the core shadow, I think the mixture that I started with, it's that sort of right between, neither warm nor cool, kind of in between. I don't want to get it too dark, but I'm going to throw some of it in right here. Oh, I think I need a little more blue, though. After you do this a while, you just you start to see things. I mean, I've told you guys this, but after doing this sphere, I don't know how many hundreds of times, I still see things in it that I hadn't seen. It, it's, it's amazing. My eyes just keep adjusting to things that are so minute and, 
And I see that there, I like the idea that there's a little more blue right here, so I keep adding a little more blue in that core shadow. And then I can go back. Edward Scissors hands. I always forget I have a thing to put my brushes. I don't have to. It's only funny until somebody gets their eye poked out. All right. All right. So this side over here, back to that kind of reflected light, but not too much. This area here, the Core shadow's kind of getting blown out a little because of this reflected light coming up into it. Kind of a lost area here is found, kind of lost, right? Lost, lost, found. I don't mind that, so. And now back again, I can take a blender, a brush that's soft, and I can go in and blend this. I make that core shadow a little darker than what I intend it to be, and then I can sort of blend it. Now I could blend this part cutting back and forth like this, like knitting, like we did before. Or if you like this stepping idea that we were talking about. You can take a value and mix a value between this one and this one. So take that value and that value, mix those two together. See if I can just do that here. And this is again where I'm taking it up here and I'm touching it on here. I think it's way too wide. What the heck am I doing? So I got to check it. <laughs> and I always check it. something that's right between these two. So, so it's a little darker. It's a little darker than that. It's a little lighter than that. And if it looks good, I'm going to cool it off just a tiny bit. So now when you used to say, I got to darken just a little tiny bit or lighten it, now you're going to say, I'm going to cool it off a little tiny bit or I'm going to warm it up just a little tiny bit. I'm fine tuning now, right? So that's going to work. So I can just take another another brush stroke right on the line of where those two separate and I just soften that line by doing another step and this one right here got a little a little bit of that light paint that I had there I should have taken it off I can step that so that's another way of softening up stepping them down like this like this painting shows to those sort of co-eccentric circles that, and all of those are just a little bit darker and cooler. And now at this point, I can, now I'm thinking about drawing. But it's funny because you think about drawing, but I'm sort of adjusting the shape which to me is sort of drawing. A lot of times we think of drawing as like a pencil and making lines. And I'm adjusting the shape of this. Okay, I'm shooting to be done before by the half hour mark. So I'm going to be good today. I'm going to give you a little extra more time today because you're going to need it to really play around with these two colors. And the cool thing about working with these two colors, it's going to it soft and I can go in and blend this. I make that core shadow a little darker than what I intend it to be. And then I can sort of blend it. Now I could blend this part cutting back and forth like this, like knitting, like we did before. Or if you like this stepping idea that we were talking about, you can take a value and mix a value between this one and this one. So take that value and that value, mix those two together. See if I can just do that here. And this is again where I'm taking it up here and I'm touching it on here. I think it's way too wide. What the heck am I doing? So I got to check it. 
and always check it. Well, something that's right between these two. So, so it's a little darker, it's a little darker than that, it's a little lighter than that, and if it looks good, I'm going to cool it off just a tiny bit. So now when you used to say, i got to darken just a little tiny bit or lighten it, now you're going to say, I'm going to cool it off a little tiny bit, or I'm going to warm it up just a little tiny bit. I'm fine-tuning now, right? So that's going to work. So I can just take another, another brush stroke right on the line of where those two separate. And I just soften that line <coughs> by doing another step. And this one right here got a little... A little bit of that light paint that I had there, I should have taken it off. I can step that. So that's another way of softening up, stepping them down, like this, like this painting shows. See those sort of concentric circles that, and all of those are at least a little bit darker and cooler. And now at this point. I can, now I'm thinking about drawing, but it's funny because you think about drawing, but I'm sort of adjusting the shape, which to me is sort of drawing. A lot of times we think of drawing as like a pencil and making lines, and I'm adjusting the shape of this. Okay, I'm shooting to be done before by the half hour mark, so I'm going to be good today. I'm going to give you a little extra more time today because you're going to need it to really play around with these two colors. And the cool thing about working with these two colors is it's going to get you ready to work with more colors. More colors. <coughs> like was said in our discussion, I've got to remember to look at what's going on up there. It's too light. I just want to, what I'm trying to do here is I'm trying to shape it. I felt like the, the roundness up there kind of lost the roundness. Again, we can This is still a bit too sharp for me, so I'm just going to take the back end of my brush and just lightly just kind of scribble between the two of them and it kind of ties them together. There's a little bit of the scribble through the brush, but it, it, it reads. And I'm going to take this reflected light up just a little bit more. Now, remember, as I said, on everything on the light side, you err on the side of a little darker, right? And everything on the dark side, you err on the side of a little lighter because our tendency would make the lights and the darks too because now I'm adjusting I'm adjusting I'm I'm putting in a little bit more light right here this is the fine tuning just a couple more strokes down here on the tabletop I go back to that value that's sort of the warmer that's very warm I can shape the cast shadow. I'm keeping, I'm keeping the shape, the value of my board, the shadow. This just kind of needed to be, and that set it down flat. You see, I did cut that off there. And plus, as this moves back, guess what it's doing. In a little darker away from the light source and do you think it would get a little cooler also or what do you think? Yeah. Probably, a, probably a bit, not, not a whole lot but... So to darken that you're just adding more burnt sienna? Kind of a mixture of both but it has a lot more burnt sienna, yeah. We'll see how this this has mostly burnt sienna and white, and this has burnt sienna, white, and a little blue. Okay. 
You see how it kind of darkens, plus it changes the... And this is really sharp here, and this gets a little bit more fuzzy back here for that cast shadow. Back there, the cast shadow gets a little bit lighter. i got to be careful not to go too light, and I need to get... There might be some... I can see a little bit of warmth in the cast shadow. Too light too quick there is some I like how that does it feel like it's more atmospheric it feels like there's space there now okay I think I think that's good for the for the demonstration so so it's just working with these three colors now and trying to make this look round plus fill seeing where the warms and the cools are and you'll notice that there's a lot of subtlety going on. Any questions? All right. Should have got rid of this dark here. That's good. Then I could turn it upside down also to check my sphere. You can remember to do that. Okay, I'm moving out of this spot, so...